Season three, episode one. Yeah. Season three. Woo. Yeah, we do uh, yeah, third season. Semester seasons. Uh, season two. Uh, this is Eric Hates Games, by the way. I'm Eric. Uh, this is a talk show about games. Uh, you know, the people who make them, the people who play them, and everything in between. We're all about disagreements, um, really bad opinions, bad takes, all that good stuff. But mostly we just want to inform gamers and non-gamers alike about the ins and outs of the industry and games and topics that we care about uh, that perhaps you also should care about. So um, this first stream is probably going to be of questionable quality. Um, I, I'm open to all feedback. You can find me on the web. You can email me at my CCM email or um, if you're a student watching, just uh, you know, shoot me a message in our Discord chat and we'll try to get better. Um, yeah, we don't have the equipment right now. We don't have uh, a lot of stuff. But we're working on it this All whole. Work in progress. Yeah, we're gonna work on it this whole semester, and by the end, we will be uh, ninja PewDiePies. Is that right? Or are those two people we? Uh, ninja PewDiePie shroud quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those people we don't want to be? Like, do we not want to be Doctor Disrespect? <laughs> I don't know. I. I yeah, exactly. Anyway. I don't <laughs> I don't use the Twitch that often, but I do care a lot about games. Uh, and with me today are two CCM students. Uh, Andreas, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, my name is Andreas. I'm a student at CCM. Uh, I've been here for a bit, uh, part of the game dev program. Uh, happy to be here on this wonderful season opener of Eric Hates Games. Yeah. I've done a few other Eric Hates Games episodes in the past. If you would see, we have like a YouTube channel up. Uh, I did one about RPGs, and I also did one about like other stuff, like board games and stuff. But never so anyway, remotely. Here episode today, go on the YouTube channel. And what should they do? Like, subscribe, and follow? Like, subscribe, smash that like button. Nice. Buy our merch. Oh. Just joking, we don't have I really want merch though. We need like a coffee. What is that a uh, website where you can just make your own T-shirts? Oh, um. And coffee mugs Ink and stuff. I think. Ink squid. Yeah. Ink squid. Ink. Yeah, I think Ink Square. Okay, let's go to Ink Squid or whatever and, and make our own Eric Kate's Games merch. And we also have Mike here. Yeah, that's you. Just turn on the push to talk. Nice. But yeah, I've been like a CCM student for like a couple months or so. Nice. It's like okay. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I like drawing, that's it. Like, I, I want to draw like characters and environments for games. Yeah, and as a program, we need more support for um, the, the digital arts side of game making, which is something that we're definitely in talks about, and uh, hopefully, sometime soon, we get. A happy medium for a two-year program that also has uh, some specialization options. But anyways, um, so today's topic we are going to talk about is one that has been coming up constantly. You might say that it never stops coming up in conversations between me, uh, students, my friends, uh, students who are also friends, um, basically everyone has this idea of games nowadays and their value, um, and it is directly related to how long a game takes to play or beat. Okay, so today's episode is, uh, games do not have to be infinite. <laughs> and I know that's like a thesis statement uh, that doesn't allow for much argument, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what I might mean, what games work well in like an infinite landscape, which ones don't, uh, history of games and things like that. So Andreas, I'm playing Rogue Legacy 2, which is a relatively infinite game. Uh, can you tell us, and so I don't have our notes up, can you tell us like uh, some of the topics we're going to talk about? Where do you want to start with this? Uh, well, first off, I think, um, talk about uh well what well first off what makes an infinite game 
what what is an infinite game? Um, I like to think uh, an infinite game, as of course, is something that's it never really ends. Yeah. It keeps going on and on, whether it's through content updates or just being in a singular servers, like an MMO, for example. You can say is an infinite game because there's no really end point to an MMO; it just keeps going and going. Uh -huh. And also, uh, another example, I think, for an infinite, quote unquote, infinite game, are games like Destiny, uh, The Division, like okay. those like MMO-ish type of like game, those team-based FPS type games, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and just games like that that are just constantly supported throughout its lifespan. Um, like they continuously get updates, they continuously get expansions, um, and those kind of get, even if like the next game comes along, some of those games still get supported way after their release, like a good six or seven years. Okay, um, so, so you mentioned a couple of examples that we should probably stop and talk about. Uh, MMOs, yeah. perhaps yeah. the most famous is World of Warcraft. Uh, and, and that is a game that came out in 2015, uh, whew, 2004, I think. And this is why we need our fact checker in the chat to check that. But I'm pretty sure that was a 2004 slash 2005 release. Now, at this point, WoW has broken up into two games. There's WoW Classic, which just recently came out, like a year or two ago. Uh, and there's WoW Retail. WoW Retail is the one, it's literally the game that came out in 2005, and it's still going. Okay, and for, for people who aren't used to games and they're like, how long they stick around, that's a very long time. Right? What are, you, what are some of your yeah. favorite games? Mike, what do you play? I play a lot of like FPS competitive games, or just like turn based RPGs. So like, they don't really have that they don't really have infinite value besides like competitive fps like overwatch because you could consistently play that until like the game just like doesn't nobody plays it anymore basically let's just see how that works there's no like, like ending to overwatch uh okay so the player uh determ the player base determines the length of the game how long like it's uh yeah. lifespan yeah basically you could also say like tekken and like Soul Calibur, you can yeah. Because like when you when you're talking about like you're talking about like the like you're, like when I'm looking at the notes here, you're like oh like time, but like what about like the actual like lifespan of the game? Like look at look at Super Smash Bros. Melee. That's been around since like 2001. Yeah. That game has not died yet. It's been around for like how long? That's like 19 years. 19 years. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and what's especially, uh, Melee is, is one of those games that uh, is usually the exception in a lot of discussions. And what, what's especially uh, really like impressive to me about Melee is that it's never been patched. Well, that's because of the system. And surprisingly, even with the mods, nobody's really ever, quote unquote, patched it. Right, so, like, right. I realize that. like. Like, people are like, oh, this game is, like, perfect the way... Like, it's really not perfect the way it is. You just think that way because you played it for a long time. Like, yeah. when you get other people's perspectives, you realize the game is not perfect in any way. Right, right. And... Like, even in, like, when, like, talking about, like, a game's lifespan, Mario Kart Wii, I realized that, too. Like, I was talking about it before. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gotta talk about channel. Like, I've seen a bunch of mods for it, but I've never seen balancing mods for the game. Like, people just want to play, like, three, like, two or three carts or, like, bikes and two or three characters. But they never want to, like, balance the game's characters and bikes so everybody can play whatever. Like, that's what I realized. I'm just like, why don't you guys do that so people can play, like, Bowser Jr. or, like, King Boo, but, like, they don't want to. Right, right. And, and uh, we should take a, a quick side tangent to talk about balance well we don't have to talk too much about balancing but basically what balancing means is one or more things are overpowered or underpowered and so they don't get enough play compared to other things so like uh in chess for example if they released a patch that was like all right the queen can no longer move diagonally queen's too powerful uh can only go up down left right no more diagonals for the queen you have a bishop for that Let's give the bishop some more play. 
right? And then patch, what we mean by patch is like the game actually changes. The developers release some code magic and uh, everyone has to download all that code magic and boom, uh, the game is now different, right? Maybe it has more content, new characters, uh, or balance updates like we just mentioned. Okay, so all of this stuff is really important to understand when talking about like a game's lifespan. Because um, the games we mentioned, like WoW, uh, The Division, Overwatch, and generally most competitive games are constantly patched. Um, and that's not the case for most other games, especially historically. Like, um, you know, arcade games, you build the cabinet, you build the mainframe that, that runs the game, and then there isn't really patches. I mean, they do exist, right? Like some... Well, for old games, they kind of just like re-released it under like, it's the same game, but like there's like bug fixes and stuff. Like they did that with like Super Mario 64, Melee, they have a second version. Like, there are different versions of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the version we have now. So that's one thing. And yeah. Basically, they're patching back then. That's true, yeah. And there were groups of people. I just watched the Netflix documentary. I don't remember what it's called. Level Up, I think? And it, it went through some people who patched uh, arcade games, like, actually modded them, uh, which is super duper interesting. Um, but, anyways. Okay, uh, Infinite Games. The main reason why I think games should not or don't have to be infinite is my argument is you should play more games. And I understand that when you're playing a game competitively, you have to play it a lot, right? Like if you're if you want to play at Wimbledon, you know maybe you play golf every once in a while, but you're not out on the football field uh, playing, you know, smashing into other players, whether it's uh, American football or Association football, right? American or world football. You're playing tennis. Uh, so if you want to get good at Overwatch, you're playing a lot of Overwatch. And I don't I don't really mean those games. I mean when games get criticized for not having enough time uh, instead of like discussing their, their value. Okay, so I put I listed some games in that sheet. Can you can you talk about some of those, Andreas? Like Oh, yeah. So those not the games that aren't necessarily, they're not infinite, they're like these wonderful short experiences. Uh, the first Portal yep. uh, comes to mind. That game, that's a very influential game. It's not long at all, it's only two hours long. Um, and it just left such an impact on a lot of people for a small game in such a small time span of two hours. Yeah. And that's also, I think, a wonderful, like, a good example of games not really having, having, uh, they don't have to be, you know, infinite experience to be able to enjoy something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can get as much uh, impact on a game that's an hour long versus something that's continuously, like also another example, uh, Stanley Parable, mm -hmm. one to two hours long, but it's like a short thing, but you still have a lot of people even now who reference that game who, uh, like, I only played Stanley Parable maybe once or twice, like six years ago, and it's only like an hour or two long, but I can still almost remember every ending in that game, including the gag broom closet ending, which yeah. I like to reference a lot sometimes. Yeah, and, and that's a game that influenced many games that came after it, right? Like, mm -hmm. that game uh, set a standard for like narrative and narrators in games. Because if you know if you've never played it or never heard of it, basically it's a, a first-person game, which means you know you are the player, um, and you walk around an office building, and no one's giving you directions, right? Like you, you the, the game starts where you're just uh, an office worker pressing a button all day for like the last 20 years or whatever, and then no one told you what button to press. So then you get out of your seat and you walk around to try to find out what happens. Um, and the narrator says things like, Stanley came to two doors and he walked through the one on the left. But you as the player do not have to do that. And that moment where you walk through the one on the right and the narrator's like, I said the left, let's try that again. 
and then brings you back or then you know like you it just goes off the rails so severely and it's only like an hour or two long max even if you're going for like a completionist play everything sort of deal um so when i when i see people excited about the new left for dead content you know, I'm partially excited too. I, I think Left 4 Dead is a good game, but like, that's a, there's other games, right? Or no, or am I wrong? Do I just hate games? <laughs> I think people just don't want to play other games because they're scared that something's gonna be better or just like worse than previous things in the series because like they have their expectations but then like if it doesn't live up to their expectations they call the game bad even if the game is perfectly fine i like one of the things why people don't want to play other games yeah i like that you said that it could also be oh man that was an amazing jump to get that that health pick up there over the spikes we got a highlight clip that that was amazing uh <laughs> I like that you mentioned that it could be better or worse. And that idea that a game is worse kind of makes sense, right? Like, I don't want to play this because it's not going to be as good as Dota. And, you know, you this happens a lot with MOBAs, where people who, who play League think that Dota is the worst game ever made, uh, or Heroes of the Storm is terrible, and then it's the exact opposite for people who play Dota. They're like, I can't believe you play League, it's such a casual game, whatever. Right. So, so a game being worse than their expectations is natural. But I, again, I like that you brought up it might be better. Like, what is that? What is that doing in your brain? Does that shatter the perception of you ha that you have of Melee being the best? Huh. What else? What else do we have on this topic? You want to know what I've noticed with a lot of the games that don't need to take maybe a few hours to play? Mm -hmm. And speaking of this from a narrative designer's perspective, a lot of those games have very heavy like narrative content. They lean very like heavy into the narrative side. Okay. In a lot of these games. Like, a lot of the infinite example, games. No, the the shorter experiences, the ones that are like only like an hour or two, a few hours long. Okay, I totally agree. Yeah, go on. Yeah, there's like, for example, uh, also besides Stanley Parable and uh, Portal One, which Portal One's less of a story thing, it's more puzzle, but you have Stanley Parable, which is like a more narrative one. But there's also What Remains of Edith Finch. Yep. That's also a short game, but it's very good in it swings very heavily into a narrative and also games like um dear esther Ooh. which that was an old game that was yeah that was a good like that was like one of the first walking sims yeah 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 and, and then um gone home yeah yeah and gone home is also a wonderful example of a short like experience like that and they're all very like narrative focused and they all tell a compelling story and there's even a few that don't necessarily have a story per se but the story i think is mainly told more through an environmental perspective as you're going around like for example abzu oh um, that, abzu is nice Ab abzu is a for those who don't know what abzu is abzu is kind of like it's like journey if you play <laughs> journey but abzu is you're essentially you're a deep sea diver and you're just going around the deep ocean with all like the ocean animals and it's like a light puzzle game and you just swim around and all the fish and all the turtles and everything are swimming around you and it's such a like a relaxing game and it's only maybe like a few at three four hours yeah and abzu is a game as much about exploration and just seeing what's underneath the water as it is about like collecting coins I mean, I think you can't. I think there are some collectathon things in there, right? Yeah. Um, like you can discover all the species. I imagine. I only played it for like ten minutes. I, I admit, but I, I think I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> if your game doesn't have a double jump, that's not for Eric. 
Um, but no, 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 you're right. Those games do have strong narrative value. And if you look at the opposite side of some of these infinite games, like, say, uh, World of Warcraft, or Tet you know, Tetris has been played forever, um, they, kind they have, like, a distinct lack of narrative. I don't want to say World of Warcraft doesn't have a story because all the WoW fans are going to tell me everything I need to know about Rexar versus Regar versus I don't know whatever the Torin chieftains are and all that. Well, for stuff. a lot of for a lot of MMO, well, for a lot of MMOs like World of Warcraft, it's not the story isn't like in your face. It's in the stuff that you read and it's in the people you talk to. It's yeah. You, the story, the war for that, you have to search a bit for it. Right, and it seems that, to me at least, and in my experience, both personally and uh, people that I know who play that, it's less about that and more about the community of, like, yeah. raiding with a bunch of friends. Um, raiding is a huge puzzle where you have 40 people who have to beat a boss, you know, and everyone has to do their assigned jobs or else you fail. Um, and, of course... Are very community yeah, and, of course, the sick loot, right? You got to get those amazing uh, Skullforge Reavers with uh, Life Steal and whatever else <laughs> nonsense. Oh no, I'm stuck. <laughs> this game is so good. Um, I don't know if we have enough time to talk about roguelike games as infinite games, uh, but I do want to. I want to make an analogy to people who have you know might be tuning in and, and aren't big on games necessarily, but like. The analogy I can think of is if you like a game or a movie or even a TV show and it just keeps getting more content, at some point it stales. Do either of you have an example of that? Or to want to refute that? Like is there some show that is just infinite and it has ma maintained its quality for, throughout? Uh, I can't think of any. Well, I don't want to say The Office. No. I mean, you can't really it's just like, yeah, you can't really say kind of much dry. for a lot of shows because there's a lot of shows that have their high and low. Like you can start out good for the first three seasons, the quality goes down by seasons four or five, and then it picks back up six and seven. It, there's never really, there's not a lot of, of shows where I think. Maybe I would say I don't know if you guys ever heard of the Netflix show. It's called BoJack Horseman. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things I think has a solid like consistency of quality between all of its seasons. And that's because of the um, characters in the show. If it's more character driven and rather than like actually having like random side stories, that's why. I mean I mean you can have a character driven show and the quality wouldn't be as good as if you don't know how you're writing it. Oh! That's the thing, if you don't know how to write a character just don't add them. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm gonna like, let this say, I'm gonna let this run like, end another show uh, I don't mean to interrupt mm -hmm. also Avatar The Last Airbender is also a good quality like a very const consistent quality show like okay. I don't know like could you imagine like it being turned into like a live action TV show like it wouldn't just it just wouldn't work they were supposed to do that action. like I, I've never heard that it was going to turn into like a live After action what's going to do it but, and there was yeah. like oh yeah I'm glad they never even made like a live action movie of it they like, did. That would have been terrible. They did. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm, I totally, I totally missed those. I missed those jokes completely, Andreas. I apologize for my my lack of watching that that one show. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always when I think of Avatar, I think of the blue people and James Cameron. That's rough, buddy. Um, and then I think of his ex-wife winning the Oscar the same year that Avatar came out, which was sweet uh, for the Hurt Locker. But anyways, um, oh, that sucks that I can't remember her name and had to refer to her in reference to James Cameron. Uh, she directed the, the movie with Keanu Reeves and I want to say Patrick Swayze? Pre no, not Premium Matrix. Rush. No, not The Matrix. It's the one with surfing. Uh, I'm really not great at uh, playing games and talking about games and uh, hearing a crying baby somewhere in the background. <laughs> but anyways, um, okay, so yeah, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, movies and, and shows not being infinite for, as a good thing, right? Like, season 
I don't know. There's a couple. I love Lost, but there's a couple seasons that didn't need to exist. Um, yeah. Think about it. Like shows that like ended basically led way to new shows today. Like some I could like think of. Like when I think about it, like the shows now that like I've been watching, like cartoon for animation wise, like. I realize that like most of the art styles mimic some of the older stuff and like some of the story writing does too. Because yeah, yeah, like yeah. when I'm watching it, like I, I watched like the Owl House and like if you compare it to Gravity Falls, it has a Ooh. lot of impact on the Owl House. So yeah. like if you take something from like the past, then you could probably change it into your own thing and then people will still like be able to recognize where it's from. Now did Gravity Falls end? Yes, yeah, so Gravity, Gravity, yeah, Gravity Falls ended a while ago. ago okay. Yeah. That was a quality show. I, I didn't I didn't watch all of it, but uh, oh, Jesus, these fairy chests are so hard. Of what I did watch, it was very good. Um, but but like movies too, you know, at some point you just if you keep doing sequels and stuff, it's you know you're adding content. Or I can think of some book series that. What's that? Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> they just made like random movies after one another. That's and nobody watched. Old. I was thinking more. I was I was thinking of the Matrix or the Avengers movies, but I don't think I'm gonna get any fans by saying the Avengers get worse and worse each movie. I think uh, people will argue hard against that. <laughs> I mean, Die Hard is also kind of like a a, a a good example of movies going down in quality as the sequels go on. Yeah. Die Hard has like what movies? Oh boy, I knew of the that first three. Made after the first one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like the Matrix movies, a lot of people are not fond of two or three. Uh, but the first one was groundbreaking in a lot of uh, regards. But yeah, so so games not having to be infinite. Um, what do you let's let's talk about time versus cost because and this is a very sticky subject that I don't want to you know get stuck on, but we can talk about it till the end. Um, patient gamers yeah what's what's a good price for a game and what do you expect how, how, how long do you expect to play a game let's start with the baseline of the next gen price of $70 per game how long would you expect to play a $70 game I would say right. more than 30 hours I okay mean, minimum 30 hours okay so 30 hours I mean I... for a $70 game I mean, it has a lot of like good writing, storytelling, world building. If it has that, then yeah, it's worth the money. But if it doesn't, then it's just like, why did you make this? Mm. It counts on the content for the price. Like, I mean, I talk about it all the time, comparing it to like 3DS games and Switch games, because I think Switch games are absolutely garbage in content compared to 3DS games. Wow. 3DS games are $40 and Switch games are 60 And no Switch game I've actually enjoyed besides like Origami King. Wow. And the content, like, and even if they make a port, enhanced port, the content from the enhanced ports, it's not that much. Ring Fit Adventure? You tried that one? No. Great. I mean, I have a lot of opinions <laughs> on the. But that's a fitness game. game. I think that's superior to Wii Fit for sure. Yeah. So, uh, what is Patient Gamer? Is that a thing on the internet? Is there like a Reddit? Yeah. So, Patient Gamers, uh, the basic gist of it is it's mainly an internet thing, and it's mainly on Reddit from what I've seen. It's just people who are like, haha, I'm such a patient gamer. I'm not going to buy a game the day it comes out. I don't think it's going to be worth the time that I put into it. I'm just going to wait till it goes on sale. Or... Oh, and I see. Just... It's that's like not really that. Because you can't really form your own opinion. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it fits into the value proposition of money versus playtime. Okay. I think they're, they have like this weird cost breakdown of every hour is worth like $2 or okay. something like that. This thing price is worth content. Yeah, uh, it's... And, and the game's, like, overall, like, the way it's built. Nah, For me, I don't like it time. because they... They kind of... They, they like to devalue indie games a lot. Oh, the patient gamers? Yeah. Yeah, we can go into a whole... Tangent yeah, about that's another, that's the value of games and Steam sales ruining 
people's understanding of what it takes to make a game. Uh, like the fact that we all got GTA 5 for free. Uh, one, it's a re it's a at this point it's a relatively old game, so I guess it's not that exciting. But like that is, that's a massive game to just give out for zero dollars. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and what happens is the next time you look at the price of a game, like Andrea said, it's, maybe it's an indie game that is a five hour experience and maybe it's $15. Uh, and you're like, well, I got GTA 5 for zero, so why would I buy this? And yeah, that, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but I do want to mention the idea of uh, systemic games or what's also known as emergent games. And this is this idea that um, you give the gamer or the player systems to play with, uh, and they make the game themselves, so to speak. Like Labo? Like Labo, like Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft is mostly just a bunch of systems, like crafting systems uh, and building systems, and the players make the game. And uh, those games, on, on a lot of senses, uh, do tend to be infinite, so to speak, you know, like, all you have to do is add a new pickaxe. Super Mario Maker, because, like, people build the game themselves and other people play it. Yeah, Super Mario Maker, yeah. And and that, you know, there's, there's a long-standing tradition of, of modding games and stuff that I don't want to poo-poo necessarily, because, like, modding games for a lot of people is their entry into game design. Uh, and it's a creative output, right? Like, making Doom levels in the 90s is pretty much the same as making Mario Maker levels. Um, but, yeah, infinite games. What else is there before? we got to close out in the next couple minutes. But any closing remarks on, on playing games, the same game forever versus trying new games? Uh, I think if you're not playing in a, a lot of games, then you're missing out. A lot of different games, you mean? Uh, yeah. If you're not playing games, then you kind of limit yourself based on like a certain thing. Okay. Like, it, it's easier to say, like, it's easier to just play like Call of Duty or FIFA or like another infinite, like, just or just Destiny the whole time. But if you're not playing other, like, games, especially games that only take maybe, like, a few hours that can, like, broaden your horizons more, like, you're missing out on a lot of cool stuff. Whether it's just walking sims, like, Gone Home, or it's something like, or maybe, like, a little platformer, like, Grow Home. Or... Ooh, I love that game. Wow. Yeah. Grow Home. I haven't heard that in a while. Or if it's just like a weird glorified tech demo slash simulator like Flower. Yay! Flower, excellent. Excellent experience. Flower. Like it's... It, it, it's... You, you have to experience these games other than just the ones that you already play. It's... Mind-blowing. It's a, it's a big world, right? Like, if you just order pizza every time you go out to eat, you're never gonna taste you know something different i don't know we you're... we are still currently in a golden age of games in my opinion okay especially with the indie game. yeah mike closing uh, remarks uh, oh yeah I was, I was gonna say like when people when i'm playing overwatch sometimes people are like oh my gosh this game stinks i'm like why are you playing it then there's so many other games you could be playing it right now and then they get mad like it's just like it's true though like go play something else there's like a thousand other games it's just like you don't have to complain. You don't have to get on the game just to complain. Yeah. It's just like, like that's that's what I don't understand. That's what people like. That's also limiting yourself. You're just gonna go into a game and complain and then not play a different game. I, I get. Guess, yeah. So many times. Yeah, I get that a lot. That that's one of the things that 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 triggers me about um, game gamer entitlement, which is like, you know, we saw it a lot with. Blizzard and, and they announced a mobile Diablo game because it makes sense for their company to do that um, and everyone was really angry at, at Blizzard uh, and my reaction was first of all I'm going to try it because I'm a fan of the franchise and second of all if I don't like it I'm not going to play it and that's the end it might take 30 minutes of my time maybe an hour to realize if I like it or not um, 
And then I can go back to playing Ascension on the phone. The only game I play. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and thanks for checking out our tech demo of Eric Kate's games. Uh, we'll yeah. download the VOD and upload it somewhere else. I think I used that word, that term correctly. Um, and yeah, thanks, Andreas, thanks for hanging out. Hey, no problem, anytime. Mike, thanks for being here. And until then, uh, go play a bunch of games. There is a wealth of them. Go play uh, Heroes of Sokoban if you've never played it. And when you're done with that, go Here play Heroes. Eat your veggies. Go, go eat your vegetables. Go play Heroes of Sokoban 2. And then play uh, play Isle, like a shopping aisle. Play Steven Sausage Roll if you have the money to buy it. Um, but yeah, Isle is a Sam Barlow game that takes five minutes to play, max. And it's an amazing experience. Play Tomorrow Park. Play Tomorrow Bo Park by Andreas. Uh, Shameless plug. Oh, all plugs are full of shame. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll see you then. Bye.